empty now, but I'll show you what gives the, the track the whole uh, groove or vibe. And the sound comes from Zebra, which is a forgotten baby of Yuhi. <laughs> uh, this is a collab with Team Green, man. And uh... Man, fuck me, but this Dude, is the sound that I... How that did I you get a collab with Tim Green? How did that come about? Okay, so we're here with Dulus. Uh, his name's also Julian, like me. Um, and we are doing a breakdown of his track, Kaleidoscope, uh, which is on Watergate Records with uh, Hernan Cataneo and um, Jorge Hevec. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've, uh, we've already recorded a video together where um, Julian did a full track in two hours, which turned out amazingly. I think it should be already up on the channel by the time you guys see this. Uh, but we just wanted to do like another follow-up video where he does a breakdown of uh, one of his tracks. And I think this one is an amazing track. So I'm super curious to see how it was made. Um, yeah. My, so, yeah. My biggest Spotify hit. Your biggest Spotify hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think with this style of music, like they don't really get super huge on Spotify. I think it's more like DJ huge. Like don't they yeah. do really well on Beatport and stuff? For sure, it's it's like actually uh, it's big to have a, a track that has let's say three hundred, four thousand, five hundred thousand plays. Man, it's a, it's a, a super big achievement in like organic house or uh, this more uh, deep kind of side because I um I guess melodic house or techno, melodic techno, all those kind of genres they have a lot more following than 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 this side of the electronic dance music side yeah 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 they're blowing up all over social media like everybody records these huge for sure media yeah. concerts and stuff yeah yeah and uh, when people go to like the uh, these kinds of shows i think that people are more dancing than they are filming so it tends to get <laughs> less press yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah if you uh if you uh, want to dive right into it we can we can start I'll talk yeah. a little bit about, um, uh, I can go from the top and all the way down to the bottom. So all the way from the top down to the master chain, the returns and all this. I, I'm, yeah, I think I'm, a good place to start probably would be just like how you, first of all, just like a little bit about how you approach building drums generally. Like, um, yeah, your approach, do you like reach for top loops mostly? Are you building everything like drum, one drum sample at a time? Um, yeah, yeah, you can basically take me through the layers. For sure, I can show you. Let's. I have. I usually have two. So I split my drums into two bosses. So what I consider my main drums, which are like my main hat and my clap, which is the ones that get the most attention in the in in the groove. Because in organic yeah. house, you want your hat and your clap to be loud and punchy and in the in your face. So I, I, I put this outside of the perks because I, I might want to like raise the volume of just this uh, bus or yeah. with a utility on the bus. So basically I'll take you through the, this is how it sounds. I'm gonna put the uh, limiter just a little bit higher and it's pretty simple. This is not as intense as my usual stuff. Yeah, but uh, I'll take you through it. I have this one hat. I think I sampled from a track. Okay, this is just an offbeat hat. Yeah, <laughs> like literally, you can take a, a whatever offbeat, and it it will sound the same. It's like a shaker with a hat uh, layered on top. But you know, it was already there, given to me. So I just is the it. is the reverb coming from a sample? Or is and the reverb is coming from the send this one? Oh, okay. It's a Valhalla room. Oh, nice. The original project was using a lexicon room, but this was made in an old computer. I have a new one now, so I don't use the lexicon anymore. So it's it's basically doing the same thing. It's just a room reverb. What are you side chaining the reverb to? The kick. Oh, okay. I'm side chaining. I side chain every single element that hits on the kick. I side chain it to the kick. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I'm, I think that's how you get like the kick to punch through. People like to uh, compress it and, uh, you know, add top layers and whatever. I think you just have to clear the way. 
But not like a super deep side chain, just a few. No, DB. no, it's yeah, it's just a few DB. It's not even. Yeah, four DB. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's the main hat. I have a clap. You can ignore this rack, this uh, this Toman rack and this saturator. I was using a a template that was built by a guy named Toman. He makes like deep tech or minimal. And I got this uh, rack from from a friend who was like following him, and he gave it away. Some some stuff like that. And I was just I've been using it ever since. I modified it uh, to fit my needs. But uh, you, you'll actually find this Toman rack and this saturator in a bunch of these tracks because that's how the default um, audio track used to be. Uh, like as soon as I own an audio track, it will pop up with that. Oh, never mind. Oh, this right. is my current one. But it's it's not doing it's doing absolutely nothing, and I don't want to start deleting every single one, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But it's not doing anything at all. So clap. And the claps is coming from a, a loop. It's coming from a loop. Yeah, I just cut the the sample at, at the moment I wanted the clap to hit, and it's a pretty simple nine on nine clap. Nothing crazy. Yeah. I have another open hat here. Uh, just I'm just doing uh, EQing on this sample, so not no. Uh, distortion overdrive. Sometimes the sample just sounds good, and I just stick with it. By the way, the clap. Do you shift them like off the grid slightly? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes this is uh, completely on the grid. Okay. I wanted it to sound a little bit robotic, to be honest. So I kept it. But sometimes I'm shifting the la the clap layers a little bit back, a little bit forward. You know, okay. the, you yeah. want this human feeling in the in the groove. But originally it wasn't like that. So clap and hat and the other hat layer. Pretty simple. And then we have another clap layer right here. It's like wider. Yeah. So this one's pretty mono. And then you get the so you from this layer. Two clap layers. Eh? Two clap layers, yeah. Uh, and a bunch of clap layers from all these top loops that I have down here. But yeah, my yeah. main two claps are only two layers. Yeah. And uh, the drums, let's dive right into it. I have a clave here that's missing. So let me find it real quick. It's probably this. Yeah, exactly this. So I have this clave right here and I added just an auto pen. Yeah. And it's it has like a little bit of um, velocity modulation on the MIDI clip. Because I wanted this like little feel yeah. here that uh, rose rice, right, rice up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Raise, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't speak English. Yeah. <laughs> then I have the. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, so yeah, the clave is also being sent to the drum verb. That's where the drum, uh, the reverb comes from. If I turn it off, it's pretty dry. Yeah. Even though the sample has a little bit of uh, yeah, reverb in reverb. it. Yeah. I wanted my own to to put it into my mix. Do you send all your drums through that? I send a almost reverb? yeah. Yeah, I think almost every single drum I send to a little bit of reverb, or they already have like. A, uh wait i'm gonna move this thing out the way um oh but you send them in different amounts like not yeah in different amounts yeah and just slam them all into it exactly yeah. yeah sometimes i want something to be a little bit more in the back so i'll push the send a little bit higher and then i'll compensate with the uh, volume because if you push it too hard you you, you actually get like more dvs in the the original sample. Yes. Yeah. I have this uh, fill from a sample pack. I just sent it to a bunch of uh, Echo Boy delay. I actually I have that same sample and recognized it when I was listening to. Really? Track. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those, man. You know. Um, Vengeance. Uh, quality recognizes quality, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I have a shaker loop. That I think was sent to me by Volensentir. I know uh, Jay from from uh, Volensentir. They're they're on Jay and um, they've oh, met. Nice shaker. And it's uh, this shaker. I might have sampled it to be honest. Uh, 
I usually sample, I might sample some top loops, but only after I've done all the groove. Maybe I just need this one little thing of like sparkle and, you know, I might take the easy way out, but we can actually like do some some drums from scratch later or some, I don't know, man. It's, it's pretty simple for me. It's really, really simple to build yeah. a shaker like this. Um, yeah, that sounds like it's got like a remnants of a kick in it and stuff so yeah yeah for sure that's probably it. and to be honest i know these guys we have a collaboration on the works and they're using they're taking a bunch of top loops out of everyone's tracks you know no one's safe yeah <laughs> yeah i know i do too <laughs> yeah sometimes it's just the easy way out you're producing you're working fast and you just take take this one and you know you bury it in the mix and you know Try and camouflage it with a bunch of your own stuff on top and you, you get away with it. I wonder if anybody ever notices like when they're mixing the two songs, like if by chance they mix. Imagine the phasing cancellation. And... Yeah. And then you hear the <laughs> third phasing, you're like, hang on. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And then uh, I have my, I have another loop here, which I took and put it on 16th uh, note. And I shorten it right here. So originally it sounds like this. Yeah. So I think it's too noisy. I just shortened it and um, uh, quantized it. So I, I I wasn't getting this hit. I could have just muted it with the envelopes here. But, you know, also I took the easy way out. And it's a little bit in there, but it's, you know, not so crazy. It also just makes it nice and tight. Yeah, it makes it super tight. Yeah. yeah. Have this other one right here, same process. Nice. So this is also like becoming a part of the clap as well, but it has a lot of the other grooves. So yeah, that has a lot of uh, punchiness. What, what is that percussion in there? Because like I always hear these sounds, and I can never figure out like what drums they use. In this loop? Yeah. Is that like bongos and oh, sorry. stuff? Like some electronic bong uh, comps or anything, but like you know, yeah. with a, a bunch of attack. This is probably synthesized with like a pitch and. Uh... You know, I, I really, really like this to bring in these electronic kind of sounds into the groove because even yeah. though it's organic house, um, you get the organic out of the congas and stuff, you know. But the rest of the groove, you can actually make it super electronic, and that's how you stand out as, as far as. A per, a percussion you know yeah otherwise you're just becoming part of the organic house movement with a bunch of congas and some shakers and you fucking call it a day when when there's so much more you can do right yeah yeah i bring in my congas here you know and this is more like a progressive house but I'll, you know you have to have this i i love congas man they are a bunch of groove but I'll, I'll show it to you in a, in a minute and then i really like doing this where i take um I take loops and then I make like my own loop out of cutting uh, single shots and place placing them wherever there's like a pocket. So I felt like this here we were missing something. So I added this one. So this is how the first one sounds. Pretty simple hit. Yeah. And then uh, I have another one. Nice. And then I have like some vocals here. So they all interact with each other. Like one says something, the other one responds, the other one asks, the other one responds, you know, so if there's hooks in the percussion, uh, yeah. I want hooks in every single element in my track, hooks in the percussion, hooks in the bass, hooks in the lead, you know, and sometimes people just write like a legato bass line and call it a day when you have so much more notes in the scale that you can use. Uh, go an octave, go a seven, go a third, go a fifth, pitch it down, pitch it up. Don't use the root note. Maybe, you know, it's, it's so much uh, stuff, you, so much cool stuff you can do on, uh, on melodies and percussion. So this is how this uh, uh, cut, cut up loops sound like. Oh, that's cool, yeah. So there's like a little bit of like, okay, I'm here, then I'm gone, then I'm here, then I'm gone, you know, and yeah. so far, this is how, what we got. Wonderful. 
Then I bring in another thing right here, which I'm guessing is a conga, which is also part of this uh, uh, cut up loop kind of thing. You know? Yeah. And there's uh, some reverb on this last uh, congas, which is from the Valhalla room also, but it's a little bit longer because there's so much more space that I can feel from the reverb right here. So on its own, pretty simple. Then I have uh, another conga here. And every single side uh, channel has just like some pretty simple EQing. Uh, I really, really do not do anything crazy on the sounds individually, unless I really feel like I want to experiment with the sound. So uh, maybe go and add, add like a phaser or delay reverb to the sound and make it long and decaying, uh, complex stuff. But I didn't feel like it needed it in this track. Yeah. And finally, there's a top loop here. Nothing done to it, absolutely anything. Not even uh, EQ, maybe. Yeah, just some low cut here. Just yeah, to get that... rid of that, like, stuff that's going on in the bottom end that, you know... Sounds like it'll, like, to... fill it out quite nicely. Yeah, and all together. <laughs> With the main hat. And the kick. And the kick. And we can talk about the kick and uh, the kick I actually sampled from a Hernan Cataneo track, man. So it wasn't meant to be a collab with Hernan, but I, I took a, a kick from his track. And this is how the original sample sounds in the original project. Yeah. And you can hear it's fucking shitty uh, sampled, you know, this is not the proper way to sample a kick. I just took, a, took it from the track and placed the low cut filter with an envelope. Oh uh, yeah, but, but you can still hear like uh, the uh, 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 this this is an old project, and I was doing some uh, really sketchy stuff. <laughs> Nowadays, I would have sampled it with my a, a rack I, I built with Ozone, which has uh, the the uh, kick split into four different bands. Yeah, so a high end band, a top band, a body band, and a sub band, and compare it to the original sample. It's a lot cleaner than yeah. the, the stuff I was doing, but you know, but does the actually, does the original then have the old way you did it? The original has the old way, so the original has this shitty ass kick sampled, man. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very. Works, I, mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, you wouldn't notice it because of all the other elements in this. So uh, this is the original kick right now with the percussion uh, only. And I'm going to swap it to the new one. Yeah, you wouldn't notice, you know, there's too nah. much stuff going on. And, you know, sometimes it works. If it works, it works. I don't touch it. If it's not uh, damaged, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and uh, let's move on to the synths, I guess. This is where the good stuff's happening. Also, pretty, pretty simple. The only interesting thing about this lead is that I'm not playing uh, single notes. I'm playing the root note and the third. This is in scale. So imagine I take this up uh, three notes. This becomes, I'm sorry, four. This becomes a triad, right? I just take yeah. the last note of the triad and I'm playing like power chords, but power chords are playing the fifth, I think. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I just, so you, just you know. You just third the whole time. Yeah, this this plays the whole time, and it just it's like as if it was like a chord progression, but you know, just without that last note. Yeah. So it main lead sounds like this. It has three layers. Then it just loops. Yeah. But the, the main idea behind this was I started like this. So this was my lead before I added the the other note, the one that goes below you it. Started with the top line, basically. I started with the top line, yeah. And I was thinking, okay, this is this is quite cool, but I'm, it's missing power. And I started laying a bunch of synths, and it wasn't working. And then the simple fix was just adding this 
one note uh, below it and it gave me the results I wanted. So the uh, melody sounded like this before I did the, the trick. This adds so much emotion yeah. that, you know, it brings, brings the melody to a whole nother level, man. And the yeah, sound man. comes from Zebra, which is a forgotten baby of Yuhi. Nobody uses this one, but I really like it. It's, it's got this like semi-modular feel where you add oscillators and filters here and you design your own sound, your routing. And I'm, an, I'm mm -hmm. a geek for this kind of stuff. I live for this uh, crazy ass looking sense that nobody wants to touch, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I've heard a lot about Zebra. I've just never installed it and tried it. It's so so good, man, and especially for this kind of trancey and like they EDM sounds. They discontinue it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, hmm. they're coming up with the new Zebra now, but this one is uh, already forgotten. It's in the bag. Yeah. And there's a layer, a saxophone, a xylophone layer. Pretty simple stuff. Just has a low cut, also from Zebra. You can find these sounds everywhere. This sounds stuck, pretty stuck sound, you know? Yeah. And another layer from the Repro. Oh, nice. And they're sent to this delay right here, which is basically what, what adds the whole stereo thing. So if I take it off, It's um, uh, what is this? An eighth, not eighth, not. Yeah, no? it's, I think it's two sixteenth notes. Was it two eighth notes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's a. I think they're divisions of sixteenths. Yeah, yeah, and that's basically it for the lead. It's pretty, pretty simple. I only have an OTT on the bus, so if I take it off, it's actually adding like a lot of top end and uh, this clickiness. making it super clicky and punchy and it's uh, that's the characteristic of the ott to be honest it's a yeah, simple yeah. trick and i have this uh, single note kind of effect from rebro which changes all the time it might play like this or it might play like well it's letting me down now but it's supposed yeah. to be <laughs> <It's gonna play. laughs> that's the same thing <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to be changing it, all the time. I think in the like, final uh, version. Maybe the oscillators like don't re-trigger or something. Yeah, I, I, no. I don't know. I just found the preset and um, I just, you know, just took this one random note. But in, I think in the, in the final mix, it, uh, it changes all the time. I had this reverb on it, but nothing special. I just, uh, uh, I wanted it too much. And to be honest, I wasn't even sending it on its own. It sounds pretty good. In context, it sounds like this. It's like a transition element, right? Yeah. And uh, let's see. You want to see the bass line now? It's pretty simple also. Yeah, yeah, sure. The whole uh, track is written in C sharp minor. And I'm only going on the root into the, if I'm not mistaken, the seventh. So you, one, two, three, four, five. So the fifth, I'm sorry. So it's only playing the root and the fifth. And it just does this thing for the whole track. But would that be the wait? Would that be the fourth? If you're going up five, because isn't, isn't it up seven for the fifth? Yeah, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're right. You're right. That's uh, that's that's what I, <laughs> I that's what I I get lost in the translation. It's uh, it will be the yeah the fourth. So you're going one four one four, but the yeah. melody itself sounds like almost like it's written in. Uh, like dominant Phrygian or something, you know, like the all day I dream kind of. Yeah, yeah, vibe. yeah. I think what, I, I think it gets that vibe. It's get, it's getting this vibe because it's playing uh, chords, you know, and mm. uh, so it gives off this vibe like it's uh, a lot more complex than it should be when it's so so simple. Yeah. The sound from the bass line is coming from uh, Ooh, massive, massive preset. You know the Still classic the good old days. <laughs> yeah, I love massive man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, when I started producing, 
like massive was just on its like decline. So I uh -huh. used it a little bit, but then I switched over to Serum. Nah, it still has, yeah. you know, I, I find a lot of the cooler sounds uh, I, I get from all these really old synths that people have forgotten about because when Diva came out, you know, it, it fucking killed everyone. Diva is the number one synth right now and it, it killed every other synth. But then you go back and you find all these really cool massive sounds or you design your own and it's like, holy shit, this has so much potential. Yeah. Uh, and used in the context of nowadays tracks because Massive is known for its wobbly sounds and dubstep and all this kind of stuff when it has so, so much potential, you know? Yeah. And that's, uh, so it's, it, Massive is just playing a layer, like a mid layer. Pretty simple, man. So, I mean, it's the simple, simplest stuff you can find. And then I have this sub bass line from Reactor, which I think Tim Green uses uh, in yeah. uh, some of his tracks in a tutorial, I think I saw from him. Exactly. I saw that one. I actually remade that exact sound that's in, in On Diva. Diva. Yeah, I to you put have it into one of our preset packs. It sounds exactly the fucking same. Your preset as well. I I, I, I think I used it on the track walkthrough. Yeah. And it's it's literally exactly the same sound as this one. It's just a sine wave with a pitch yeah. envelope, to be honest. So yeah. This is the groove. And you can see that thumb, this this thumb here, it's uh oh well it's layered. Yeah, well, uh, I was about to tell you, I think the thumb's not playing when the bass is playing, but it is playing. <laughs> So, you know, it's a little, bit, a little bit of a fuck up, I guess, but it sounds pretty cool. Did you sidechain it here? No, nothing. It's, uh, Tom's not sidechaining, not even. It's not hitting at the same time as the kick, but it's hitting at the same time as, as the bass, and it's sharing low frequencies. Well, just a little bit, but, you know, yeah. I would have EQ with this and uh, maybe sidechain to the bass or something, but, it's, yeah, you know, it wasn't doing any damage at all, I guess. Yeah, I think it's such a, sh a short, like, punchy sound. It doesn't, like... Yeah. If anything, it's adding, like, a little bit of the punch to the bass, you know? I don't know. Yeah. And with the synth? It sounds pretty empty now, but I'll show you what gives the, the track the whole... Uh, groove or vibe okay so. uh i'll go to the pads now uh, or pads what it, this should be in the same uh boss as the synth modulation thing but i wanted this ott to only affect the leads yeah so i started out with this dune preset i found and uh it's like a sequence ah nice this is what started the track man uh, yeah, that bottom looking... note reminds me of like chicane. Uh... Exactly, exactly, man. That's I found nice. this one and I was like, holy fuck, this sounds so proggy and sounds like, yeah. you know, I want to write something on top of this. And chicane came into my mind, you know. Yeah. Uh, exactly, it sounds like those saw waves they used to use in their, it's their signature sound, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, when you find these sequences, man, uh, you, you find it really hard to write a track because they're playing in a certain scale. And if you want to like uh, create harmony out of them, it instantly it becomes impossible to stay in like a pop kind of key for like a more uh, a Western uh, music uh, scale, you know, because as soon as you go from one note to another one playing the same sequence, you start getting borrowed notes or it starts uh, modulating into a different scale. Yeah. But when you play the the first, the root note and the fourth, I think it's always going to be on the scale, you know. They share, it for all sequences, man, this is a, a thing I found. Or, well, it, yeah, because the exactly. third always changes, but the fourth. Yeah, I mean, yeah exactly. Know, it, it, it's, it's, it probably yeah. has like some uh, uh, music theory behind it, but uh, I'll give you a little, like, for example, if I was going to write this track on a, a C minor scale or whatever I'll use. Sorry. And 
you can only modulate in in these two notes if you want to like stay on the root but nowadays for me i i write a lot of more crazier kind of harmony wise so i might just you know do something like this yeah and you know you if you if you move the whole track with this it's it doesn't sound so bad you know when you're playing melodies on top of this in the bass line uh it's it's uh, it's weird for the ear because we're used to this like uh, perfect harmony kind of scales whatever but going out of this and writing weirder music with the it it becomes cooler you know it's it's not yeah something it's definitely like, like an acquired taste the more yeah. i'm getting into this kind of music the more i'm starting to enjoy it. like i used to avoid like going to the six like a play you know mm -hmm, anytime mm -hmm. something's slightly dissonant you're like, oh no, let's not. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. As you, I guess, as your ear kind of starts to mature, you start to like look for these weirder harmonies because it gets exactly. boring. The older ones, right? Exactly, one hundred percent. That's this. That's exactly what, how I think nowadays. You, we've already written like a lot of this stuff, so we we're going for the craziest stuff now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the, basically the sequence. It plays throughout the track. And uh, I play only with the filter cutoff. So I open it, I close it, blah, blah, blah. You know, the good old tricks. And absolutely nothing is being done to this sound aside from a low cut. And I'm sending it to um, a lot of reverb and some more ping pong here with the Echo Boy. Okay. Uh, next up, we have the pads. Just you can see it's playing just the root note of the chords sorry the last synth that was dune right yeah it's, it's dune three yeah dune three and uh this is uh the pads coming from jupiter 8 from arduria yeah uh i wanted like this retro kind of sounding pad sounds like some future uh some uh, vangelis kind of stuff and it's just playing the root note exactly like well, like this uh, sequence right here. Only thing is I took it and put it into, I think, the second inversion of the chord. Yeah. I don't know, man. Sometimes, uh, you know. And that's it. Those two chords play throughout the whole track. And uh, I do this because there's a little bit more of a voice leading kind of movement where, whereas this is just like two chords completely separate from each other, only sharing the root note. This is more like we're here and then we move up. So we are only moving mm -hmm. one semitone here on two semitones. And then this one is only moving one semitone. So there's more of like a relationship. There's probably some more mu music theory behind it that I don't know, but uh, sound better yeah. to my ears. Yeah. It's more like a gentle movement. Exactly. Like, yeah. A gentle movement instead of like this fucking huge jump from one note to another one. Yeah. Next up, we have my Moog Sub 37, which is playing the, this melody. I'll play the recorded sound because the Moog is off right now. Yeah. And uh, we'll see the, the notes move with the. So let's play it here. And it's a simple sequence I wrote in, uh, so it says, I wrote this in a C, C minor sus2 chord or something. Let's see. If I was to like place it in a chord, a more chord friendly kind of thing, it would be this chord. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you know, and sus2 seventh or something. Some, some of those that crazy ass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I basically just took the sequence exactly like I did with the Dune sequence, and then I pitched it up to the yeah. to the root note of the other, and that's that's all that is. So if I take the original sequence, oops, okay. So let me go back. If I take the original sequence, hold on, and I I copied it, I just duplicate it, and I just pitched it up to the root note of the other chord they will all fit together. What? Oh, nice. 
That's yeah. simple. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it follows the chord progression perfectly. And that's like the main theme of the track. Yeah. And finally, I have this uh, guitar chords that I found from a Vengeance sample. Uh, I was going to ask I, you, like, did you record this guitar? Because yeah. I think it adds a lot to the track. It, it's the element that I believe uh, for me when I when I was like, this was like the last, last element that I added. I was feeling like, OK, the track's finished. I have a main lead. I have groove. I have bass. I have pads, blah, blah, blah. But I still felt like this track was written a hundred times before. And I just wanted to add like a weird element. And I usually just browse for on contact or whatever, just weird stuff that I, you know, I can pull out of anywhere. And then basically I found this guitar loop. And as simple as it is, I just took the one that was in C sharp minor for the first chord. And then I, I pitched the same uh, loop to, uh, up to the fourth. Yeah. Up to the, yeah. So it's playing that. Uh... There must be an F sharp somewhere around here. But yeah, it's uh, following the progression. So if we. And that's, that's pretty much it for the guitar. I just. Uh, uh low cut it uh i added some um, delay 116 it's pretty pretty buried in the mix but it adds like yeah. a little bit of stereo and a bunch of side chains to the kick and this was low cut i'm sorry i'm just you know fading it in with the filter place place throughout the job i fade it out in this section and fade it out for the outro so um I don't I don't think when I was listening through I think I only really noticed it sort of coming in on the in the breakdown. Um, yeah, because in the rest of the track, like right here, it's probably buried by the by the all the synths because it's it's a, a little bit low in the mix. Actually no, I guess it just gets you know maybe, I don't know where, but anyway. Kind of flashed I, it in the I only realized like halfway through the song, I was like, where? There's no yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. But I really, really like these elements that you're like listening to the track and you're listening for the first time and you, you, you know, you don't pick it up and then you listen back to it and you, what the fuck? There's some guitars here, man. Yeah. Sorry, man. Uh, for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> that's my brother. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the track. As you can see, it's a pretty simple track and, I, I really love showing this project because it's it's using sounds that everyone has. Like you have access to every single VST that I've used here. You have access to all these sample packs. It's nothing crazy. Uh, the baseline is also super simple. And you can write a hit track. This how many how much elements do we have here? So actually there's quite a lot to be honest. I I was thinking it was like twenty five channels, but it's like forty channels long and it's has almost 700,000 plays in, in Spotify, you know, I'm guessing it will hit a million sometime soon. And it's a pretty, pretty simple project, nothing yeah. done, no, no crazy mixing. And this is the pre-master I sent. Uh, Watergate did their own master because, well, they have this crazy master engineer that I'm, you know, I, I, I really love what he did to the EP, but the, the, without all this stuff on, this is the track that I sent. And they did what they did and you know it sounded cool but my master is also what was used by a lot of DJs to play it out before the release yeah no it sounds really good um so and yeah. It, yeah it's pretty much it and I'll, uh, let me i'll talk a little bit about the arrangement just so you get a uh, like uh so basically it's a uh, intro pretty simple stuff transition element here this guitar starts showing I open the sequence. I have like a mini break here. The move starts coming.
coming in. Break without kick. Build up. I didn't show the snares, but they're pretty simple. It's just a snare. Low cut it with a filter and a bunch of reverb. And uh, I'm doing this thing right here where I like uh, make yeah. 32 notes. So it's like a little fill. That's how I add the continuity, you know, like this classic EDM rising snare that, you know, you know but I didn't want to go so crazy. And uh, snares for me are like a little bit cliche and I try not to use them that much because it instantly sounds like, oh, fuck, it's a build up, bro. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they do work really well. No, they they no, they fucking work, you know. Yeah, yeah like I, I, I don't use snares, I don't try to use them as much, but then I'm like, fuck me, I need a snare, you know. So build up. So drop, the drop blade. I modulate the I didn't show this either, but I will now. I'm modulating the cutout and the oscillator waveform, so It moves, uh, it, it has a lot of like dynamics when I modulate the, the waveform. Yeah. So it's always changing, it goes down, it becomes a saw wave somewhere around here, it opens up to be a square, uh, you know, it's a really good sound. I found it, I fell in love with it. And um, yeah, so basically it continues, the drop modulator, blah, blah. I have a little break, no kick. And then we're back to the sequence with the move melody. I, I basically took this and looped it three yeah, times. And what, I, I so had you basically just added in the last section is just another layer to the lead. Just another layer to the lead. That's what the the main element, like, okay, the boom, boom, here's the maximum energy point. And I, I, it's a little bit of a lazy songwriting because I could have done a little bit more. But uh, sometimes it's, you know, it's that easy, I guess. What What did you add to the drums there? Uh, there's uh, this there's this uh, conga thing that appears only in that section. So nothing else changes, like dynamics in the drums. Like you don't no. make hi hats no. a bit longer no, no. or anything. No, I um, I don't do that that much to be honest. Like open up the DK on hats and all that stuff. It's yeah. uh, cool tricks, but I don't. Uh, I think if the track already has the um, the essence, like a really good melody, a, a really good melody, then. Uh, you don't need all these firework tricks around it, you know? Yeah. I think if you're adding fireworks or super crazy stuff, automation and delays and reverse sense, blah, 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 all this crazy stuff, it's because you don't have a solid idea to begin with, you know? Yeah, that hurts, but uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, you, you, you have some really cool tracks, uh, 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 but, you know, uh, um, uh, the, the fireworks are only for this kind of like, f fuck me, I don't have a, a proper melody. I'll just do yeah. some fucking fireworks, you know, but uh, you have yeah. a, tracks that are really, really good that I, I don't see any fireworks in. And I actually see like some musical content, you know, it's. Yeah, I think um, I mostly, I really enjoy like um, adding lots of dynamics to drums and stuff and, you know, weird delays and stuff. I just find it fun. Um, but yeah, I think it's true. Like when you come up with a really strong song idea and it's like the track just writes itself in like a couple of hours, you don't feel like you need all that stuff and you probably don't, but oh, I'm so sorry. Huh. <laughs> so sorry, man. The camera just went off. Oh, shit. All right, I'm back. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What I was saying is like, yeah, if your track idea is really strong, you probably don't need to add all that stuff. But in my opinion, like adding it is not going to hurt, you know. No, and no, no, one hundred percent. Add least. like an extra few percent. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes this uh, actual production, uh, like 
I don't I don't want to curse. I, I curse a lot, so I'll just use, use some more chill word. But this like showing off production wise is really cool. You know, it's like okay, this guy knows a bunch of shit, and, and uh, you know, uh, us producers we notice it. I just don't think like the average listener notices like. Like, I do notice a lot of this stuff. Like, oh, my God, the hat is opening a little bit here. That's fucking hell. There's so much dynamic in this track. It's so fucking cool. But then yeah. the average producer, the, the average listener is like, okay, man, cool melody, bro, cool sounds. You, you know? You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And, uh, um, I, I, and that sort of stuff is not going to make a shitty track good. Exactly. Ex- that that's really, my point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my point. Uh, you, you know, you have a good track and you take it to the next level. Then you have a fucking incredible track. You have yeah. a shitty track and you add fireworks, you still have a shitty track with fireworks, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me uh, let me show you the, a little bit of the sense. So basic uh, drum reverb, for, uh, drum room for the drums, a medium reverb, which has a little bit longer uh, decay. I have a plate reverb. This is from UAD plate. Uh, pretty simple mm-hmm. stuff. I have this... Uh, uh, reverb I copied from a Sebastian Leger video from one of his like uh, tutorials on Facebook or something. And I, I rarely ever use this because, well, there's so many more cool reverbs, but it just, it's just been stuck on my um, template ever since. Oh, nice. Regular one eight uh, dotted reverb. I have this empty weird sound effects that I might use for guitar rig or something else. Nowadays, oh. guitar rig is in my template. It's not here because this is a pretty old project. So you use it a lot? Guitar rig, yeah. Fuck yeah, I love it, man. Uh, whenever you want like these fireworks, I will go and find like a guitar rig preset and I'll just automate that as a send. And actually, let's, let's, uh, I don't know if it's okay with you, but I want to show it up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I use this a lot and it's uh, one of those things that you will hear in a track and you'll be like, okay, what the fuck's that? And it's just to send uh, a send whatever, you know? So right now it's not doing anything, but I'd say I'll, I'll go into presets and I'll, uh, I'll go in FX types and I'd say I want some reverb, whatever. I'll just, okay, chorus reverb sounds cool. I'll load it and, you know, like a head like that. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a uh, pretty guitarish, but this is actually some really cool stuff. Or imagine you automate this in the build up, right? For the snare or something. Let's see how it sounds. Let's do it on the drum. Box. You know, it's, you, you get you get dynamics, you get effects, you get crazy stuff. And this, this yeah. is a bad example, but it, it has a really, really good amount of incredible sounding presets man yeah i've got it and i've heard people talk about it i just haven't really dived into it yet there's so it's many one of the... cool weird plugins i think i saw you using what's that uh that's like cytron's kind of multi-effects oh plugin. tantra man i fucking yeah. love it because Tantra's... i make i make uh, minimal and uh, deep tech also uh, under another alias which is my own name julian veloso and oh, uh I use this a whole lot, man. And when I'm making that kind of music, I'll just grab a, like a regular loop, throw Tantra, re-record it, resample it, and you get like a whole fucking new uh, melodic idea. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and finally, my master chain, uh, which is um, basically an Oxford inflator. Let me remove all this other stuff so we don't get confused. Everybody loves the inflator. Dude, uh, uh, it's on my, I don't produce with the master chain on, but the Oxford inflator is always on. I cannot, I have Oxford inflator in my ears, man. Like it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm always uh, running uh, Ableton with this shit on and I cannot yeah. hear music without Oxford inflator on, you know, it's uh, So what it's, are your uh, inflator settings that you use? It's just like at 50% or something. Yeah. I don't know. That one looks old. No, this, this is not the UED one. I'm trying to get the UED one because I bought a, a lot of UED plugins the other day. And, but uh, the inflator is not um, uh, native, man. Yeah, which one do I have? That's the one from Plugin Boutique. I don't know if there's a new one, man, but this is like ancient is Sonox? stuff. Sonox? Yeah. Might be, I don't know. Open yours again quick. Let me see. 
Uh, yeah, Sonox, yeah. Sonox, yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> do, you, uh, do you use that band split? On, on the inflator? Yeah. No, I just I just put it on. Basically, I, I just load it on, and it's like, I think it's always at like 50% or something. And uh, that's, I, I just leave it there. I don't, I don't even touch it. I, I don't know what it does, but it, it, it does something cool, you know? Yeah. It's some harmonics, whatever, saturation. Saturation, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it does something really cool. And basically, this is my master chain that I've always been using. This is how I send my demos out. And this is always the one I use, and I don't change it. Like, lately, all my music has this one. And even some of my latest releases... I mastered myself, so it's using this master chain. It's basically a little bit of OTT. Uh, depends on the amount of energy the track has. If I if I finish the drum groove and it already has like a bunch of high end stuff, uh, usually five through three percent OTT is fucking insane. And even in the master, it's just gonna go crazy. So super super low. It's already adding a lot. Yeah. This track had it at like. 11 because the drum the drum the drum groove i'm sorry is uh, it's pretty mellow to be honest you know it's not so shakerish and like rides and whatever yeah so it needed a little bit of this boost i guess a multi-band uh, i don't know what this is off but i use uh, i just use a preset uh, upright bass or something like that maybe over here this one i just i just throw this one in and it does something and it does the trick <laughs> <laughs> I have this ozone, which is also not uh, doing the thing it should be doing. Uh, this is, these are not the settings. Oh, okay, okay. They, they should be on. Actually, let me drag in the the one I'm. Because you know this is. Uh... Let me take this one off. Okay, so now these are the settings that are always going on on my projects. So this is the multiband that I was talking about. Uh, exactly the same preset. This is an Ozone Exciter. I uh, I moved this quite a bit depending on the track. Yeah. Uh, but it's just basic saturation for the low end, saturation for the low mids, saturation for the tape, saturation for the mid highs, and tape saturation for the high end. Uh, Sooth on the master, just to like, you know, uh, the, it's the, um, it's the lazy way out. Yeah. I have it yeah, to fix I my, my resonances. Button. Not on the master. Not really on the master, but, yeah. um, like usually I'll put it on like a, a bus, like a drum bus or. Yeah. 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 It's usually, it's also in my drum bus as well. So it's only like removing this. A little bit of those, you know, like yeah, resonancy kind of stuff. You know, so Sooth does whatever it wants, and it does really good at doing it. And finally, just some fab filter limit limiting, which I basically push until I hit between minus three or minus four dB of gain reduction. And that's basically it for the master. Nothing crazy at all, as well. You know, every plugin is doing its own thing. This vitamin stereo is mm, almost. 99% of the time off. So this yeah. is exactly how the chain look, should look at the end of the day. So multiband compression, multiband compression, saturation, uh, EQing, and limiting. Nice, man. Cool. Yeah, thanks for that. That was really insightful. Enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice to see like, um, how simple it is, but like super effective. Yeah, it makes me want to go and produce now <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I always draw inspiration from these kind of videos as well man yeah. i hope people go in and make uh, a really good track maybe try this uh core trick uh yeah. find some zebra sounds you know that you like make a really simple arrangement and then you already have it you're, you're already 80 percent there if you have a really good um yeah. uh, solid idea to begin with yeah and i think drums are also just like they i feel like Sometimes I have a great idea, but the drums let the track down and then I get bored of it because the drums just aren't grooving right. For sure, for sure. And this genre, it's all about the drums, to be honest. In yeah. pop, they get away with an 808, 909 clap and an 808 bass. Mm -hmm. and they call it a day. We actually need to build a fucking insane groove to begin with, you know? 
Yeah. Is there anything you want to plug? I know you've got a Patreon where you are doing like project files and stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I keep on forgetting about it, even though I want it to grow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do have a Patreon where I'm uh, doing track walkthroughs, uh, tracks from scratch. And I'm showing a lot of the my releases. I run posts where people like get to pick the next release for the next month. So if you ever want to like uh, hear a track from me and you're like, how the fuck did you make this track? You can pop in and send me a message. Uh, hey, man, can you break this track down? I'm also uh, uh, doing some feedback sessions where I get some demos and I like write some melodies on top of them or uh, I can tell them like maybe you can change this chord to this chord. Uh, or evolve it harmonically, whatever. Just you know, whatever I think could make the track better. My my, um, you shouldn't take my word for it. But yeah, and just a bunch of other cool shit. You know, I I really love uh, sharing knowledge because I think when you're going up and you're already at a certain point where you can help other people out, I think you should. It's not about uh, fucking kicking the stair down. It's about making the stair stronger so other people can climb it. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. That's why. I yeah. Do this. yeah, yeah, great, man. Uh, what's the Patreon name on Patreon? It's Dulus Musica. I, I yeah, it's Dulus. Patre- yeah. yeah, it's Dulus. Dulus. Yeah, Patreon slash Dulus. That's the right, the, cool. the one you should be looking for if you're into this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm also uh, I'm uh, I want to say I'm I'm a producer more than an organic house producer. I've written a bunch of different genres. Uh, I live in the Dominican Republic, so I've already written like reggaeton and some other kind of like weird genre, well, not weird genres, but like more popular genres. And uh, I write a bunch of stuff. So my tracks from scratch might end up being like an indie dance track or a melodic techno track, or, you know, so you can learn a lot from, from these tracks from scratch. It's not just organic house, organic house, organic house, because fuck me, man. Sometimes it's get, it gets boring, man, writing the same mm-hmm. shit all over and over. Yeah, I also struggle with that. <laughs> I think um, I, I was giving this advice to somebody the other day. Like a lot of people say, <clears throat> if you want to like make a career of like being a touring DJ, then you should like stick to your lane and like write the same music, which obviously makes sense. But if you're yeah. planning to like produce every single day for the rest of your life, you can't just make the same style all the time. It really does get boring. Like, brother, you know, it's a, I'll start it's feeling a, like work. No. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. Uh, it's it's um it's like uh, would you eat fucking uh, fish and chips for the rest of your life? Yeah, you know <laughs> you you, you have a favorite dish that you go and and, and eat because it's your favorite one, but yeah. you don't eat that shit every day. <laughs> yeah, man, I I ate like <laughs> I, um I stopped eating pasta for a while, and then I got like hooked on pasta again, and I had every single day for lunch for like a month. I had pasta with. <laughs> cheese and olive oil and rocket and i was like this is the greatest <laughs> shit ever and now I'm like i can't stand it because i ate it too much uh this is a collab with team green man and uh so this is where i'm taking oh, nice. my organic sound dude so uh, it's a lot heavier a lot clubbier almost borderline edm sound but you know with a little bit of the ooga booga of the organic uh, thing you know Then it has this beautiful melody that King Green wrote. Man, fuck. Going. 
<clears throat> Fuck me, but Dude, this is the sound that I How did that you I, get a collab with Tim Green? How did that come about? Oh, I, I, I know Tim and Seb like really, really close. Oh, okay. uh, they're, they're, but they're both really good friends. Like I have their WhatsApp and uh, Seb, Seb came, uh, Sebastian Leisure. I'm talking, I, you know, Sebastian Leisure. Yeah. 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 I talk with him a lot and uh, he actually came to the Dominican Republic. Uh, for a party and uh, you know we were already talking on whatsapp and i told him hey man uh, i i what's up man i want to see you and he he said hey come over the party was an absolute shitter of a party and um he actually came back home and he slept here man like he i hosted him so we we became <laughs> super close <laughs> nice uh, and if through him i also met him i've been sending team music for uh, for quite a while now and I, I sent him the, the first demo of this track. I don't remember the name, but the, it was exactly like this. Team added some, some stuff and made like some changes to the chord progression. And he added a really cool sound over here, I think. Those melodies. But the main hook and this hooky thing is mine, but the track was exactly like this with this main hook. So it played all the fucking hook all the time. You did the I added. Huh? You did the drums. I did the drums, yeah. Oh my god, they're so good. <laughs> they're punchy. They're... There's a snare there, man, because that you know, like I told you. Good. Yeah. And uh, then team, like he, this was like a fucking. It's it's a two minute drop, and it didn't have like any evolution. Just like the ride here and there. Uh, like the classic opening of the filter, the blah, blah, blah. And Tim was like, yo, this is a really good track. It's fucking punchy. It's clubby. I like it. But it needs uh, uh, it needs development. And I was like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this shit. I don't want to work on it anymore. And he's like, send me the project. I'll develop that shit. Nice. I, sent him, <laughs> I sent him the project, man. And like uh, two hours later, he sends me this fucking beautiful melody. And he's like, do you like it? And like, fuck you, man. <laughs> of course, I like it, dude. It's the only song. It's the only song I listened that uh, that we wrote. That at least, like I wrote, and you know, it has a little bit of his touch. But uh, it gives me fucking goosebumps every time I play it, and every time I hear it back. Like this melody fucking roars, man. You know, mm, that's so good. I think yeah. Tim Green. I mean, Tim Green. I don't think he has any weaknesses mu musically. Like his no. drums. His drums yeah. are incredible. Uh, but I think like his real, real strength is the the melodies and stuff. He's a magician, man, and it's a you know it's a um, it's a fucking uh, gift to be a producer and also a musician. Yeah, he has a musician background where he, where he used to play like with a rock band. He has like two other different music projects where he makes melodic techno and another one where he makes this and that. And you know he's he he's gifted as far as like coming up with really really cool melodic ideas, man. Yeah, no, he's he's incredible. Where we fucking struggle, he he fucking shines, you know. And and also his drums are fucking. I've seen a lot of his stuff, and uh, he's uh, shown me a lot of his projects, and it's nothing crazy at all. It's just you know the stuff we do. He just gets lucky and does it a little bit better, you know. Yeah, that's all just about your ear, right? It's just yeah. hearing, hearing the right stuff and putting it together. I see his stuff and I'm like, what the fuck, man? Why do you, why do you, your stuff sounds like this? And I'm doing the same thing. It's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, nah, my motherfucker, man. Give me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same shit. Everyone is doing the same shit. Just, you know, fuck. Sometimes it's just luck, I guess. Yeah. <laughs>